practicing it and we were getting pressure from DV like, yo, you guys got to turn this turn this in by the morning or it's going to miss the record. And I'm like, can you guys stop fucking calling me? I'm trying to get this shit done. <laughs> right. Like, bro, like, don't even answer the phone no more. Don't even answer the fucking phone. And so we, like, put our heads in, like, super hard and, and got the mix um, nice like we needed. It was it was a little sharp in, in, four, in the 4K area and it was fucking on my ear. And we were trying to um, kind of get this one little thing under under wraps and we didn't make it. Um, but it got it sounded good enough for us to turn in because we figured in mastering, they were going to take off that whatever was bugging and bothering us. And so when I turned, like we were so tired, I think we left at 7 a.m. in the morning to go to bed. So that was the last song on Lab Cabin, California. Sent it off to, uh, with a courier, sent it to, uh, to DV and I went to sleep. Woke up with a phone call or some texts. Um, actually, we didn't, didn't have texts at the time. It was like we already had a beeper. Mm, right. <laughs> But I woke up with the phone call and it was, you know, Rick Ross was like, yo, man, this shit is amazing. I am so sorry. And I was like, man, I told you, I was trying to just, y'all got to trust us. You know what I mean? And uh, the rest is pretty much history. Uh, it's a lot of fights that actually happened that, you know, you got to fight for what you love. You know what I mean? And man, it, if it was, if it, if I didn't fight hard, a lot of them things wouldn't have happened. You know, did you did you find it more difficult with the creative process with the guys during the first album, or was it becoming more uh, difficult with the second album, or did things get better? It's all the same. It's because it's all the same because we all care about um, our the project, Farsight projects. It's all the same. There will right. always be anything. There will always be a struggle for some, for for something, but the right kind of struggles. Um, but you still, you can't let people talk you out of your vision. Right. They don't understand. And so since people don't fucking understand, you don't tell them shit. You just do it and then, and then hit them with it. Right. And give them that, give them that ugly face. Like, Ugh. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Just hit them with it. Cause that, you know, the proof is, the proof is right there with it. You, know what I'm saying? you guys dropped as you uh, drop dropped as your first single, and it's uh, considered uh, hip hop's most innovative video of all time. Uh, yeah. Can you take me back to uh, the concept and the idea and what your thought was uh, when you was uh, first told of these, um, you know, the idea behind the video? Well, uh, so we worked after working on a lot of different videos, like even the other fish video um, where the the treatment. You know, um, when you executed it, it kind of didn't really come out like you wanted and, you know, the way technology was and stuff like that. So it made it kind of hard to have what we actually wanted. But this time working with. Um, oh, my goodness. Spike Help me out. <laughs> Spike <laughs> yeah. Jones. I have. I, yeah, I have so Spike many. Jones. I have so many things in my head. Yeah. Working with Spike Jones was like um, he came to us. and He was like, look. Um, if I do a video for you guys, I only want to do it to this one song and it's dropped. So that's why Drop became the single is because Spike Jones was like, I'm going to do if I do a video for y'all, I'm going to do it for this one. And when he stepped to us about it, he said, I want it to I want to shoot it all backwards. He's like, I want you to we're going to walk, go backwards and just shoot it all backwards, doing everything backwards, learning the words um, backwards as well. And then we're going to flip it around. And, you know, like the the mouths are going to be on, on beat and then it's going to look, have this crazy feel to it. And, and, you know, that was right up our alley. It was like, hell yeah. And so we had a meeting. We we're like, let's think of all the things that we can that would look really dope going backwards. And so we had the, the red balls that were supposed to be bouncing down, this, uh, bouncing back up the stairs, you know. And there were so many shots in, uh, that we did that we didn't get certain edits the, you know, to get certain magics happen or, you know, I was like, let's, let's just unpaint a painting and, you know, and the whole deal. And so we were like going through all these things together collectively. And, you know, we basically put it all together. He was like, he was, it was like the most fun I had making a video ever, really. It was really fun. He pulled it off. There, I, there's no complaints from us, bro. You know what I'm saying? Right. Except it was cold as fuck in the morning to get wet. Right. <laughs> It was too cold to get wet, you know. Uh, this is considered uh, one of the greatest hip-hop covers 
uh, of all time. Um, Rap Pages wow. was definitely uh, on top of things when it came to uh, giving uh, artists their flowers. Uh, can you take me back to that photo shoot? Yeah, um, um, I, I, I barely remember it, I'm be honest. Um, but it was an important one. And I, the part that I do remember is um, what we believed about it. And when they were wrapping the, the two inch reels around our hands and, you know, like just, you know, the con the whole concept of it all and the sepia tone feel. And like, there was just a lot about it that um, was classic, you know, it was classic and it was a truth, you know, um, every time I stepped to the microphone, I put my soul on two inch reels that I don't even own. And that was something that we felt like <clears throat> we didn't really have as much control over as we wanted, you know, and that was just what it was. Um, it's a lot of parts to it, you know, right. even like I, I remember smoking weed and, and rapping my verse for, for Soul Flower. And I just had a moment where I was like, man, my voice is going to be trapped on these two inch reels and on vinyl and everything forever and ever and ever. And I just kind of sat back and thought about it. And I just started crying. I just had tears just well up because it's just like, man. Now you just got to make sure that what you say on record is what you are. Right. You know what I mean? So the, hence the song, something that means something. And it's just like a lot of parts, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> that photo shoot was definitely a classic one for sure. You know, and that rap pages cover was like everything for what hip hop meant to us, what it meant to freestyle fellowship, what it meant to all the LA uh, crew homies. Um, we were kind of, I feel like we was living for uh, for us all, right. you know, because there was not a part of us that we didn't share with a Freestyle Fellowship or, or 2000 Crows or, or the, the Good Life folks or, you know, or NWA, you know, just like things, you know, all that was a part of L.A. and who, who, who we were. Right. You know what I mean? So that was, that, that spoke for a lot of our hip-hop homies and friends too everyone even to this day uh is trapped on the on the situation um but i know things could be better or sh or can be better if they really want it to be you know and here the universe is just knocking shit down and making things available for the artists uh to be in power as well and that's cool but at the end of the day <clears throat> in in a, in a perfect world we all need a great team because right. it's, you know, <clears throat> I knock, I used to knock labels here and there, but I don't knock them too much. When you see, when you have to pull money out of your pocket and make shit work, no man's an island, man. Y'all got to figure out how to do this shit together and be a magical fucking team. Share the pie. You know what I mean? I ain't got to have all the money. I just want to have my part. I just want to, I don't want your part. I don't want his part. I want my part. And everybody have enough so we can stay creative and keep pushing. You know what I mean? To be a number one crew and continue to be a number one crew musically. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be thinking about shit and take my focus off of, of of where we going, the bigger picture. You know what I mean? We can't even get to the fucking bigger picture. Right. Let's get to the big picture. Let's make some real good quality music and have a great team. Like, I remember, like, trying to do all the jobs you just can't do it bro you get burnt the fuck out i want a good art team i want a good team like fuck the graphics to come you know bringing it because they're spending their time on those, those ideas and then you got the the marketing and promotion team focusing on this thing and like there's so many parts to make you a su huge success right you know what i'm saying and it costs fucking a lot of money that shit ain't like what when you like we see the videos, oh yeah, hoo -hoo, ha -ha. they cute, this, that, and the other. But behind, all the parts that make that shit happen and shimmer, it's a lot more than you, man. You gotta not be an egotistical person. Right. To, you know what I mean? Like everybody, everybody gotta eat. Everybody wanna shine. Come on. Right. You guys uh go ahead. No, I'm saying Cadillac's not just a you know, a <laughs> steering wheel. You know right. what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> uh right. Running's uh, considered one of your guys' biggest hits. Um, when that second single dropped, uh, what did you witness as far as the momentum of Lab Cab in California at the time? Um, when, well, when, when, when uh, Running dropped? Yeah. 
Shit, man. You were talking First about how, you were talking about how it was on every radio station at the time. What did you witness as far as the momentum? I'm sure the album was doing well, but when Running dropped, what did you witness as far as the momentum uh, uh, of the album? All right, look, just just what I want you to do when this is done. I want you to sit back and I want you to push play on Running and just let that just carry you. And if you're on the road just driving around with your crew or whatever, like when we was on tour and you just, and the radio just come on and that's you. I mean, I mean, it's happened before, trust me, but it was just the way that it was happening. Like either it was in our car or somebody's window was rolled down is blaring out of their car or, you know, you turn the station and here it comes on again. And you know what I mean? It's just like a lot. It was just like a wave and it it, it was different. It was different, you know? And right. Pass Me By, believe me, Pass Me By is, was the joint. Right. But for whatever reason, running was, that guitar lick just, it just made you feel positive and like he was going somewhere, like he was achieving something, he was getting somewhere, he was, he was, you know what I'm saying? Right. It was, I don't know, Farsight energy calls for itself. It's beyond me, bro. I'm glad to be in the, uh, <clears throat> Driver's seat sometime, passenger seat sometime, back seat sometime, as long as we going forward. Right. The last single on that album was She Said. Can you take me back to that creative process between you and Fat Lip to uh, create that single? Uh, man, so She Said, I, I, I produced the beat, and um, LAJ helped me um, to get that, you know, produce that whole deal. And She Said was kind of like, I remember being in a uh, lab cabin, the actual lab cabin, uh, making the beat and just kind of going through like just being in this mental daze or what have you. Because you got to, you know, the song got to make you feel a certain way uh, and it tells you what it wants you to write, you know, and then certain experiences that we were having at the time. Um, <laughs> it was just so it was it was so for me and Fallon. I mean, it, this situation was just so for me and Fat Lip. And <clears throat> I don't really know how to explain it, man. Um, but I definitely was kind of one of those guys that were always getting in, tr getting in trouble when it comes to, you know, relationship situations and shit. And this one time, um, you always think you're getting away with something. <laughs> but you really aren't. <laughs> the universe is just like, oh, you know. I remember like uh, my windows fogging up on my car, and the, the girl that I was seeing at the time had wrote her name on the window, and, <laughs> and then the fog cleared, and so I'm just driving, living life, driving around. And next thing I know, I'm with, with my actual girl, and <laughs> <laughs> and the windows fogged up one day, and it was her name on the window. I was like, mother. <laughs> <laughs> the universe is not on my team. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, this shit is whack. And um, that was basically like kind of the she said situation. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's always that one, you know, it'd be good if you could stay with me tonight. You know what I mean? Like, yo, but yeah. I got shit to do. Or, yo, I'm with, I got this situation. But, you know, if things were always like a candy apple and shit, you know, it's like, fuck, yo, yo, I'm about, all right. <laughs> You know, right. and you always wind up uh, making just decisions that aren't healthy, you know, and right. that's that's basically the story of that. You always wind up uh, in situations. There's plenty of situations when you're um, <clears throat> when you're us. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, so she said um, came up with its magic. Um, just that right there, you know, um, it'd be good if you stay with me tonight, for sure, is that right. deal. And you granted her a wish by not doing the right thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, but um, the rest is kind of history. And um, you just always in the loop of this this magical vibe and these pretty women and just, just everything. And just life is, life is like a like your favorite mojito in the, on, a, on a sandy beach right you know what i mean and that's kind of what it should sound like when you're listening to it 
1995, everybody seemed to be pleased with that album. The Source magazine gave you guys four mics, which uh, was pretty incredible for the Source, who we know were pretty biased. Uh, so four was almost like a five to us. Uh, when it was all said and done, what was the reception like uh, from the general public? Do you remember uh, what the reception was like for uh, Lab Cap in California after it dropped? They thought it was five. <laughs> they thought it was a five. I think we were supposed to be on the cover of, uh, I forgot which, which um, maybe it was the source we were supposed to be on the cover with, but um, we, I think we shared a cover or something like that, or like we was on the, I don't know. It was just so, so many uh, little different parts, but hip hop was always like, yo, they was, they should have did this and, you know, y'all should have been this, that much higher or should have sold that many, many more records and the whole deal, you know? Um, but we were just, <clears throat> we were honored to be a part of it and to be on it, in, you know, in general. Uh, but yeah. Dope. I'm not ungrateful, man. Four, four, four mics. <laughs> yeah, that was hard back then. They were really uh, Yo, looking back. See, it was very hard. And you know what was a trip? When motherfuckers was getting them shits easy. Right. Because we knew that we knew what the struggle, we knew what four, four or five mics were. Back in the day, yeah. oh, you couldn't get a mic. You couldn't go buy a mic. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? You couldn't go buy a mic, fool. And they, <laughs> yo, right. now, and when they started giving them away, we was like, yo, what's happening to this? What's happening to the source? What's happening to the things that we trust? And it, and that's it's a big thing with hip hop. What we trust, we trust you. Right. We trust you. With your sound, we trust what we read and with your publications and stuff like that. And you and you got bought out by this thing or that thing, or somebody punked you, or you afraid of this motherfucker, or this, you know, like, or, is, or is, like, where did that type of shit come from? Right. Because when we hear it, it sounds like shit. <laughs> when we right. see the mic, it's like, wait a minute. Right. <laughs> you hear that? It sounds like it's thing. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you, are you reading this? Like, all the parts, like, look, man, if I had a, if I had a shit something, or a shit record or whatever, it's a shit record, and I probably need to go take it back and, and make it better. Right. How will we ever know to get better? How can we get better? You know right. what I'm saying? We accept shit. Absolutely. We accept shit. Yeah. Oh, man. Crazy. Well, I, I, right. asked, I asked you a favorite tour from the Bizarre Ride to the Far Side. I witnessed you guys, luckily, with uh, Cypress Hill and 311 during these years. Oh, Can yeah. Can you take me back to uh, any memories uh, during that tour? Uh, a thousand stage dives. <laughs> <laughs> so many stage dives, man. Wow. 311 was awesome band. I saw someone stage dive, or excuse me, Fans were jumping off of the balcony into <laughs> the crowd. I was like, did that motherfucker survive? <laughs> well, there was like an ambulance here. And, and uh, oh, man. I remember my bodyguard at the time. <laughs> he staged up. He staged up onto the crowd, too, once. I was like, boo, you're supposed to be looking out for us. <laughs> right. No, he, he staged dive and just collapsed the whole crowd. It was crazy. But, I mean, like, the energy was always super up. You know what I mean? It was... Every day was a celebration. Can you imagine that? Like, every day was a celebration. It, it was one of the every greatest day? times I had. Man. Be yeah. real. Oh, man. Cypress, come on, man. And then mm. it's, it was like three super energetic bands. Right. You know? Right. And we wanted to do it as much as possible. You uh, know? Five years later, you... uh released your last album as a member of the far side with plain rap uh, what do you remember most about that project uh what i remember well i think that project could have been a better project if um the organization of the songs were uh, the way that the playlist of that those songs the song listings needed to be uh different because it would because like you know how when you listen to lab cab in california or excuse me when you listen to bizarre ride to the far side you can listen all the way through. And and it's the way things are placed that make can make or break a record. Right. And so for for plain rap, I thought they did a because I wasn't there for like the artwork and stuff like that. And hats off to Imani and, and, and Booty Brown for they plain rap, the album cover, that shit looks dope. 
I mean, the artwork and everything, seeing all that shit through, that was dope. Um, I would have arranged the songs a lot differently. Um, I think as writers, as MCs, I think we grew a lot. Um, I was definitely on some other shit. I was in my Phoenix uh, mind state. And <clears throat> if you listen to the lyrics, you're going to hear it. You know, I wasn't fucking around. Like, right. I'm trying to, you know, I got to a space. I wasn't so abstract or sometimes when I write, like I lose <laughs> my train of fucking, fucking thought. Right. And I have to get, you know, like people like, oh man, that shit is so dope. It's so abstract. It's like, nigga, I didn't even mean that. I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to stay focused on a goddamn topic and I just couldn't, you know, my ADD type shit, you know, but for play rap, I was on point. And for now I'm on, I'm on point. Right. You know what I mean? So like the, a lot of the struggles that I might've been going through um, as a writer, I felt like I, you know, I kind of graduated a little bit on the playing rap record. So I was proud of the playing rap record. Um, <clears throat> technology had caught, caught up a little bit um, with the video for Trust, you know, and I, and I really enjoyed um, what happened there. I was definitely a part of that, um, making sure that that came across um, well for the animation and stuff like that. So <clears throat> everybody's doing their parts and stuff like that, you know. Um, I just wish I did. There's a, some things that I may have could have done differently uh, as a, a, a member uh, of the band. You know what I mean? Um, I was working on le uh, liberation and a lot of solo stuff too. Uh, definitely had no intentions of leaving the band, um, but things went the way that they went. And, you know, some things that Romai said was probably at the end of the day, probably right. You know what I'm saying? This for the record. Um, but. <clears throat> I was trying to achieve some other shit <laughs> that when you listen to my record, it's, uh, it, it shows. There was just topics that, that to talk, that I would talk about or whatever, that maybe, you know, they couldn't relate to that at the, at the moment, you know, or they might not have want to talk about that. You know, I was going through some spiritual shit, like some spiritual change, like some spiritual shit in the sense that fuck whatever I learned as a child kind of shit. I was going through some things. Right. You know, and I needed to I needed the outlet to express that. And I did. You know what I'm saying? But um, I was kind of given a, a little bit of an ultimatum, like, you know, you do this 100 percent or or not. And I'm like, yo, I would never do. I would never give you guys an ultimatum, bro. Let's I think we can I, can, I think we can do this. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we all have our parts. I definitely have my part. I apologize for my shit. You know what I mean? Because in hindsight, looking at how much they had to carry as the two, that's a big load to carry with another uh, member uh, not there. You know what right. I mean? So that's like kind of, you know, that's like shit on the windshield. Right. You know, so my apologies and I love y'all. That's what, that's all I got. That's beautiful. That's what's up. Yeah. Um, moving forward, uh, Legend of Phoenix 2000. Was it always in the card for Slim Kid to release a solo album? Yeah. I mean, here's how I think about solo albums. I think about how, like the Wu Tang, got Method Man got a record. You know, ODB had a record. You know, and they still do Wu Tang. So that's kind of how I. Creation is creation, bro. You know right. what I mean? Like I have so many different outlets of create creativity, and things. You know what I mean? I I, I, can't, I don't even know how else to explain it. You know what I mean? But. Farside records and magic are exactly that. And when you step in the building to do that, that's where your focus should be. You know what I mean? Right. Can you, uh, for those who have been trying to keep up with you, can you uh, briefly talk about your solo uh, releases like Liberation, Slim Kids Cafe? Yeah. And your well, work with uh, DJ Newmark? Oh, yeah. Wow, those parts. So as far as my Liberation record, um, I wanted to kind of get out of sampling a lot and I wanted to do some live music. And so that was that part of things, you know what I mean? To have a live band and to try to, you know, start doing that. But uh, Liberation was its thing. Um, Slim Kid Trey's Cafe was a whole nother, man, there's just so many parts of time. God damn, like, uh, it's not that I don't remember them. It's just that they're so, they're different rooms in a mansion, you know? Right. And in the Slim Kid Trey's Cafe, um, 
I think I think all of my ideas were starting to to come together and and to sound how I I really wanted them to sound, you know, be it like like with the vocalist in the um, behind, uh, or just kind of the elements that I was kind of diving into. Um, that Phoenix Zone really took me um, on a super journey, bro. Must tell you, like a whole different person, right? You know, and so that's what. Um, that's what liberation slash um, Slim Kid Trace Cafe was kind of all about. A uh, lot of work, a lot of money um, coming out of my pocket to fund a lot of stuff, a lot of lessons to, to see that you cannot do things by yourself. Um, things are expensive. You know, right. I remember like just product placement, for instance, like when people go into the record stores and you see like stacks of 50, uh, 30 or 50 CDs, like, Right when you step up to the counter, it's just that back in the day it was like three fifty or four dollars per one CD that could sit for it to sit there. Right. You know what I mean? For the people to have the impulse, by, oh shit, I know about that. Yeah, that's the record sounds good. Let's grab it instead of somebody have to go search for your shit. You know, it's just there. And these parts cost a lot of money. Lots, lots that I learned. Um, I had more energy young when I was younger too. Um, to do that type of thing and touring, touring was a whole another fifteen thousand and twenty thousand a week to mm. to do on your own, right? You know, renting cars, hotels, paying people, all kind of you know what I mean. Like it right. makes you appreciate what you what you had, right? You know, it's action. A- Action Selection, one of your uh, supporters, wants to know, do you have any additional info on the song Emerald Butterfly? Ooh. Uh, I produced it. <laughs> <laughs> I produced that one. Um, Emerald Butterfly was an experience, uh, kind of like she said, but way different. Um, it's kind of like... Um, Emerald Butterfly was just, long story short, was at a a bar in Denmark. And I was trying, we were trying to figure out what kind of bar bar it was. And I wound up finding out that it was like kind of like a, a, a slightly strip club kind of situation. But it was very, like, you couldn't really tell. Just, you just couldn't tell. And, and I just sat there. It's real long trying to figure it out and then this uh, lady comes out I'm like sitting by myself and this lady comes out and she's like dancing in front of me or whatever and it was like the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my whole life I, I just couldn't believe it and so next thing I know this girl steps over the the um, the velvet rope and sits right next to me I'm like uh <laughs> I'm like okay <laughs> I guess I guess we'll start talking. So, you know, just long story short, and dollars and dollars and dollars and dollars later, you know what I mean? Um, these were moments of an emerald butterfly. You know, it wasn't a it wasn't about you're you're not a magical person. I'm talking about me. Right. <laughs> you're not a magical person, uh, and and she was there for the business of the business. You know what I mean? And I got the kind of, you know, the short end of the stick. Where my where my mind was and where her mind was was two different things. Great conversations, however, goal not achieved <laughs> on, on, on my end. But you know, like hundreds of dollars later, kind right. of deal. So the Emerald Butterfly. What does uh, Slim Kid have upcoming? What kind of projects? What kind of uh, avenues are you pursuing? What can we look forward to everything Slim Kid Trey in the uh, future? Well, um, tr- hopefully Trademark will uh, get, get sparking and, and get going. That was a, a magical moment. So I'm looking at like a, a lot of different little milestone areas. That, uh, Trademark was a big one. Uh, with, um, DJ Newmark and Austin Antoine. And another situation... For me, is uh, all of our Bizarre Ride uh, projects with my team, LAJ, uh, K-Natural, C. Brown, you know, uh, a lot of my folks. And I have another project called Adult Things 
that um, is a, a record that um, I just have. It's 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 kind of writing itself a little bit. I had you can't like really put it all together until it's done. So there's a lot of I got hundreds of songs that are you know in the works or whatever, and just getting that stuff together and maintaining. But uh, staying active, a lot of DJing right now. Um, doing a Twitch live stream soon. Um, Slim Kid uh, Twitch dot tv slash slim kid three uh i will be getting that uh, up and rocking um but i've been doing a lot of djing um i've out here in portland um uh, when things when it wasn't covid um i had a my first party out here was live and direct my other uh party that was uh going quite well uh was body heat x and the throwback pdx is a party that we're going to probably start doing a live stream with as well and that's it, man. I love DJing, man, because it keeps my head in the game of making music and what moves the floor and then how I write music. You know what I'm saying? So that's, in a nutshell, for me. Oh, and my merch. Y'all want to buy merch. <laughs> Absolutely. Up, you know what I'm saying? Is there uh, What social media should we follow? And uh, Do you have any websites as far as uh, Slim um, Kid 3 goes? Yeah, well, Slim Kid, uh, Slim, Slim Kid 3 .com, Um, I have to kind of re-up my... Uh, my website, but people can always follow me right here on Instagram. I'm, I'm really on Instagram the most and, um, you know, Facebook, my Slim Kid 3 page as well. That's it, you know, because everything is changing. So you don't kind of don't know where to land and everything is, you know, takes a lot of money to do. So I'm kind of trying to feel out what I want to do with my um, my actual website since social media and everything is like, yo, it's hard to surf, you know what I mean? Because right, right. it's ever changing. And you want to be where um, everyone is and we'll get to it. I don't know. Right. But you can find me here for sure. Hey, I want to thank you for everything you've done. You personally changed my life. Thank um, you. Thank you for everything. Yeah, everything's been timeless. Uh, we're big fans. Um, thank you for everything you've done for the culture um, and everything. You know, if you need anything, I'm, I'm always here as far as music, uh, promotion. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there was one last bonus question. You could probably much predict what it's going to be. Uh -oh. um, what is the status of Farside uh, in the future? Um, I'll, I'll tell you my status. I'm open. I'm ready. What's up? That's, that's what's good. You know what I mean? Um, I think the fans deserve to have us make some more music together. And, you know, I'm open. I'm ready. What's up? Let's go. That's dope. I have been in contact with two uh, other members out of the four. You make three. So hopefully I can be the connector to make this happen. The fans want it. Time is too short, as you can see, with the recent deaths really? of, uh, you know, because it wouldn't be yeah. far you know, it wouldn't be a far side if one of you guys passes away and it just wouldn't be the same. So hopefully we can get this train rolling. Everybody who's logged in, flood up these guys' inboxes with requests. Yeah. Um, one last question before we get out of here. Any chance you guys will release uh, uh, music from the vaults from, say, a 92 to 95 period? I'm open because we got some stuff. I know you You talked to enough. You talked to enough. Uh, you talked right. to me and, and probably with, with Booty Roma. Brown. Yeah, you talked. You know. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's good stuff, too. Man, we did so much stuff. Right. Yeah. That would be nice. <laughs> That's what's up. Thank you so All much. Right. This has been episode 103 of History Lessons. This has been a great interview. I thank you so much, Slim Kid 3, for thank everything. Uh, we'll see each other again in the future, hopefully, when everything uh, clears up and you can get out on tour again and you can come to Indiana. You've been here oh, before. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's what's up, man. Thank you so much for everything. All right. Thank you. Peace, man. All right. Salute. All right. Indeed. Appreciate everybody for logging on. This has been episode 103. If you can, hit up Slim Kid, Fat Lip, uh, Imani, Booty Brown. Let them know we need this. Life is too short. Uh, we lost too many legends. Uh, we need this to happen ASAP. I want to appreciate everybody rocking with me uh, in the new year, 2021. Got a lot uh, of good things. I've got a, a MF Doom, uh, Daniel, KMD, uh, happy birthday, 50th uh, birthday going on Saturday with some special guests. So be sure to tune in. Uh, shout out to everybody, all my hip hop heroes who have uh, logged on, all my people that I talk to on the regular. I love you guys. Uh, keep up with me. It's 2021. Salute.